Welcome viewers to a video prepared by John Alrin Martin, a student of N3A. And you're watching Genius Hour. Hi everyone! In this video, we are going to talk about the blood disorder called the G6PD. But first of all, let me tell you, have you ever thought of something is different from you? Like when you're having allergies, rashes that came out of nowhere? Or in foods that you suspect that is the cause of something that you feel right now? Well, in that case, prepare yourselves for a dive as we will tackle what is the meaning of G6PD or also known as the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. Hopefully, by the end of this discussion, you will be able to understand what is G6PD, who G6PD affects, how it is diagnosed, treatment for this disease, and what are the management for this disease if ever you have it. G6PD is said to be the most common enzyme deficiency worldwide. It affects the red blood cells, which increases their vulnerability to oxidative stress, and then can result to neonatal hyperbilirubinemia, acute hemolysis, chronic hemolysis, or the absence of some clinical symptoms. Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency is a X-linked trait, meaning the disease can be positive in patients with defective X chromosomes. Well, believing that a man has one X and one Y chromosome and a woman have two X chromosomes, it makes a man more susceptible because once the man's X chromosome became defective, they will already have the disease. In which for the woman, if there is only one defective X chromosome, they have the partial disease, meaning it is a mild G6PD deficiency. If the two X chromosomes is being affected in female, she is also positive in having a G6PD, which is very unlikely of them. Next is how this deficiency mainly affects the human body. Starting from the chart provided, we will start in the producing of this glucose 6-phosphate enzyme. So the G6PD enzyme is the first step in fentose phosphate pathway. This enzyme generates NADPH from the dehydrogenase reaction of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. The NADPH produced in the reaction can then be utilized by this glutathione reductase in order to reduce the amount of ROS, or the reactive oxygen species. Going back to the top in where the person lacks the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. The NADPH produced will then decrease, therefore, the increase of reactive oxygen species will then increase, in which then can result damage in the red blood cell that connects to our hemolysis, leading to anemia. Now moving on to the classifications of this deficiency. Remember that patients that have this disorder have their enzyme being less produced. So we have five classifications. The class 1 are those people who only have less than 10% of the normal glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. People in this classification suffers from chronic hemolysis or the destruction of the red blood cells. Class 2 also have less than 10% of normal enzyme but the only difference from class 1 is that class 2 have intermittent hemolysis, meaning not all the time, they suffer from the destruction of the red blood cells. Class 3, with 10 to 60% of the normal enzyme, with intermittent hemolysis, they have the G6PDA allele. Class 4 are the ones considered as the wild type. The, they are the normal persons. Then, why do they have this deficiency? It is because they have the allele called G6PDB which still consider them as a candidate for G6PD. Last are the class 5. So you might be wondering, what is more than class 4? If class 4 are the normal persons, well class 5 are those people who generates twice as much of those normal persons. They have the twice as much glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme, still with the enzyme being doubled, it is researched to have no clinical issue of any sort. Blood findings. These are usually abnormal findings found in the blood of the person 
that suffers from D6PD deficiency. First of them is the anemia, which is the lack of red blood cells in blood. As said earlier, the lack of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme could cause hemolysis, which is the destruction of red blood cells, which then lead to anemia. Next is the anisocytosis. So, this finding is connected when the person is having anemia. It is the different sizes of the red blood cells which are clearly present in the blood. Findings cause usually red blood cells are of the same size. If anisocytosis is different in size, we also have poikilocytes, which the RBC is different in shapes. Bite cells may also be present as the word itself, it has bite marks. Literally. Also, the presence of Heinz bodies in which red blood cells with little packs of hemoglobin inside of them. That is what we call the Heinz bodies. This type of deficiency is commonly found in African, Asian, Mediterranean, and Middle Eastern descent. So let's dig deeper inside the blood of our D6PD deficient patients. Diagnostic tests are provided in order to verify the presence of these hereditary conditions and it had helps us to identify by which if an individual is affected by the disorder. First off is the dye reduction or also known as the met hemoglobin reduction test. This test requires sodium nitrate solution of 1.25% and the methylene blue chloride of 0.00004 molar or basically 150 milligrams of methylene blue chloride added in one liter distilled water. So the test starts off putting sodium nitrate in the blood sample, in where it will transform the hemoglobin to methemoglobin HI, and after that, it will be added with methylene blue. Once the results are finished, the sample must be in clear red color, which interprets the normal reconversion of our methemoglobin back to the hemoglobin itself. The d 6 positive result will be giving a brown in color, which tells otherwise. So the next test will be a rather easy one, and this is called the rapid card test, or also known as the screening test. An example of this will be Binax Now g 6 pd test. This requires a sample blood collected in heparin or EDTA. Well, of course, it came from a patient. Another requirement is the Regent A together with a card that will provide the visual results. This test can be performed with three easy steps. First is to combine the blood sample and Regent A. Next is by mixing it. And lastly is the dropping of the mixture in the card provided. Seal it and wait for 10 minutes and results will be shown. Layers of color will be shown for normal blood but only one color will be shown in glucose 6-phosphate deficient blood. And now that we finished in the diagnostic test or those fancy looking clinical terms, ideas that you might have a probably hard time recognizing. And now we will go to the treatment of the disease. Although GXPD is a hereditary type of a disease, which are mixed within the genetics of an individual, Still, there are temporary things in order to subdue its effects. By effects, I mean the allergic reactions when in taking foods, drugs that are contraindications in our G6PD individuals. Like when your eyes puff, remember that G6PD deficient individuals tend to have allergic reactions to foods with soya, drugs like pain relievers, in which are treated with NSAID or over-the-counter antihistamine. Steroids may work as well as prescribed by your doctor. So here is the list of those foods and medications you might find beneficial for a G6PD deficient individuals. First off is the soya, in which are commonly found in nuts, legumes, and even the likes of beans. Well, any beans. We also have Dapsone, which is an anti-leprosy agent, methylene blue, which can contraindicate within this disorder, nitrofurantoin, or what you guys want to call it, peglotikase, phenazofiridine, 
frimakin, raspberry case, and tafenokin. All of those are harmful drugs which can give you a hint not to take into your system if you have G6PD deficiency. Don't forget naphthalene as well. Management for this type of disorder can include diet. So better start limiting those beans, soya, and avoid naphthalene. A hint of what naphthalene is, is those mock balls. Used for pests like mice, spiders, snakes. Well anyway, I for one is a person diagnosed with this disorder so I can relate clearly what lifestyle I needed and I also have a frequent nasal sinusitis or the running of nose. Whenever I take soya like soy sauce, I usually have these big bulging eyes that you might find funny as I am like Manny Pacquiao after a big boxing fight. Well, kidding aside, I intake by mouth and hand tie histamines to lessen the effect of the inflammation. Well, that's it. You have learned in this video what is the definition of D6PD, who does it affects, a diagnosis for this disorder, treatment as well, and our management for this disease. Until then, see ya! Thank you for watching Genius Hour.